Welcome to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, we'll learn about disordered crystals and how best to represent their structures. Throughout this tutorial, we should be considering substitutional disorder, where the same site in different parts of a crystal contains different atoms. This is very common in metal alloys such as copper zinc, bronze, and also in aluminosilicates, including zeolites and many important rock-forming minerals, such as feldspar. We can represent a disordered site similar to an ordered site, with a site label, a set of fractional coordinates, and a chemical occupancy. Rather than a single element, the disordered site would need to have a chemical formula giving the proportions of different elements or vacancies. For example, Al 0.5, silicon 0.5, meaning that each site has a 50% probability of containing aluminium and a 50% probability of containing silicon. Please do not try to define disorder in terms of separate sites with the same fractional coordinates. This is rather clumsy and, as we'll see later, it won't work very effectively. Now sites can also be partially occupied, in which case one simply specifies the element fraction, for example SI 0.9. The vacancy amount, 10% in this case, is implicit in the formula. Conventionally, disordered sites are represented in terms of average atoms. Crystal Maker will display every site, regardless of its occupancy, using your preferred atom sphere style. The colour and radius of the site are based on the dominant element on the site. So, for example, if the site had formula Al 0.9, Si 0.1, then it would be coloured as if it were aluminium. If you want to indicate that the site is disordered, you can use the Atoms Inspector to change the style of the site from, say, a rendered sphere to a two-tone or quad-tone sphere or even a pie chart sphere although this does get rather fussy for complex structures. But the key fact is that all symmetry-related sites will be shown in exactly the same way. What if, instead of showing lots of identical average atoms, you want to show a real pattern of disordered atoms with different elements? Now we should point out that there is no single static pattern. Atomic arrangements will vary throughout the crystal and over time. This is the fundamental nature of disorder. Still, it can be useful from a teaching perspective to indicate what disorder actually looks like, even if this is a fleeting snapshot. It might also be useful as a basis for modelling to have a statistical model for site disorder. In attempting to visualise a disordered arrangement of atoms, we need to start with enough atoms to allow a realistic, randomised distribution. Things are complicated when the element ratios are, are irrational. Uh, for example, consider a disordered crystal with composition 73% aluminium, 27% silicon, and with one average atom per unit cell. Now, to show this graphically, we would need to show at least 100 atoms, 73 aluminium plus 27 silicon, because we want to show whole atoms and not pieces of atoms. If we want to be able to keep our visualisation periodic as a crystal, then we would need to create a supercell, a multiple of the original unit cell, which is large enough to encompass the disordered distribution. This is the basis of our Visualize Disordered Sites command. Let's illustrate this command using the site structure. 
Chemosite is an alloy of iron and nickel, found in meteorites. Here we can see its low pressure structure, which is body centered cubic. The structure is disordered because each atom looks identical, but has multiple occupants, in this case 95% iron and 5% nickel. And we can see this formula in the Info Inspector. We could also see the formula in the Edit Crystal window. We want to visualize a statistically disordered arrangement of iron and nickel atoms. But clearly, having just two atoms in the unit cell isn't enough. Let's choose the Transform Visualize Disordered Sites command. In the dialog or sheet that appears, we're prompted to specify a multiplicity. That is how many linear multiples of the original unit cell we require for our new supercell. Notice that we can't make the supercell any smaller than a three by three by three cell, as that wouldn't give us enough atoms. This three times multiplicity gives us three by three by three or 27 subcells with two atoms each, giving us 54 atoms in our new unit cell. Now that's enough to show a ratio of 19 iron atoms to one nickel atom. Here's our 3x3x3 three by three by three supercell, and you can see the nickel atoms plotted in green. You'll also notice that Crystal Maker has generated a totally new structure, so we now have two structures in our structures list. Let's uh, try something uh, bigger. I'm going to try a 20 times supercell so we can get maximum randomness. And we can see that's going to give us 16,000 atoms in our new cell, that's an 8,000 times multiple of the original cell. Let's switch to a space filling model and we can see a nice disordered arrangement of nickel. And if we use the uh, atoms inspector, we can toggle the iron atoms on or off and we can see the disordered arrangement of nickel atoms inside the unit cell. Note that this is a random arrangement. If we try repeating the command, we'll get something rather different. Now that we have our disordered arrangement, we'll make a nanocrystal using the cluster command and a radius of 25 angstroms. This is our nanocrystal of disordered camosite.